Okay. Good morning, everyone. Happy day. My name, well, you all know who I am. I'm Leslie, but I have a guest. I haven't had a guest in a while. I have a guest. <laughs> yes, yes. My friend, my friend, Jennifer, Jennifer Johnson. She is an intuitive healer. She's my friend. She's seen me boohoo cry and she's only known me for like a couple of months. Um, so that alone just tells you everything you need to know being like that I said she's an intuitive healer and that I boohoo cried in front of her <laughs> like <laughs> she knows how to tap into what we're going to talk about today which is intuition what is intuition so before we get into all of that um, I want Jennifer though to just introduce herself and yeah so go ahead yeah, so my name is Jennifer Johnson, and I am super excited to be here. First of all, listening, I just want to give you so much gratitude for inviting me to your community and to your beautiful community. And with that being said, um, I hope that you all just take this as an invitation to, to listen and to process whatever resonates with you and what doesn't to just put it aside, knowing that this is an amazing open conversation. And I'm glad that you invited me here with regards to intuition. And I know you wanted to touch a little bit on my journey and how I got to that point. Uh, so as, as Leslie mentioned, I am an intuitive healer. And um, most of you are probably thinking like, what is that? Yeah. So first of all, uh, we're all intuitive beings. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make that very clear. And we will go into a discussion of what that means. Um, but I really consider myself more as a heart-centered coach. Uh, so my background, I'm a holistic occup occupational therapist by trade. Uh, I'm also a running coach uh, for long distances. And I'm also an intuitive healer, right? And I think the intuitive healer came from uh, just my career as an occupational therapist uh, and I think really that inner knowing, even as a child that I had within me, that just started to kind of develop as the time went on. And my journey through this experience of intuitive healing actually came from long distance running. So I don't know if many of you know me, but I am also an ultra marathoner. And you probably are thinking like, what is ultra marathon? Because yeah, so I didn't know. Heard, yeah, so yeah. you've probably heard the concept of marathon. So marathon is like, okay, you you run 26.2 miles, right? Which even some of us just fathoming that 26.2 <laughs> miles, you're like, oh, what were you thinking? Well, for me, that was my healing. It was my ability to tune into myself and allow myself to go inward and really enjoy nature and just connect at another level. A lot of people run for different reasons, but that was my why. And then ultra marathon came uh, into the picture. I was like, well, I did 26.2 miles. Like, why don't I go the distance? I did. I started off with a 50K, then I did a 50 mile. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do um, 100K. And then you're probably thinking, okay, like that's a lot of running. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a lot of running. But for me, it was like, I was getting closer and closer to myself because when you're doing these longer distances, you really know how to listen to your body, how to listen to your mind. Because the reality is you can have a plan, like a running plan, and that's just the strategy, but it takes a 95% of mindset to get through these longer distances and then really just tap into that 5%, which is did you train? Did you do the, the, the mileage and so on and so forth? And then um, I know that primarily a lot, uh, there's a lot of mothers in this mm -hmm. group. Yeah. I'm also a mother. Uh, but um, when I was pregnant mm. as an avid runner, I knew that that was probably going to stop right. In terms of that period of the nine months that I was pregnant. Right. And you know, I had to make that sacrifice where I knew that, hey, like the well-being is for my child. I am nurturing my child. This is exciting. I'm going to be a new mom. All the feels that come with that. Uh, but then comes you birth your child, mm -hmm. right? And I think sometimes what happens to a lot of new mothers is you lose your sense of identity and your sense of self. 
and you kind of get disconnected with your wholeness as a person because now you have this new beautiful gift and human being you're also trying to be a wife if you have a partner and then you're also trying to you know if you have a career do that mm -hmm. so long story short I knew that in order for me to to kind of um tap into my power and my wholeness and stay true to myself mm -hmm. and minimize the chances of postpartum depression. Yeah. I had to identify what was going to bring me inspiration. What was going to be my goal for me? Because as I was pregnant, my goal was to become a mother, right? To, you know, be expensive for my child or whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. But then it became now, okay, I'm going through all these feels, these hormones, I don't necessarily feel my best, right? right? Because I had a pretty traumatic birth experience. And I knew that I had to do something for me. And so that's when I decided to sign up for my 100 mile race, uh, which some of you are thinking like, <laughs> who does that? Who signs up for a 100 mile race? But for me, yeah. because running was such a healing process for me in the time period, mm -hmm. I realized like this journey is for me those hundred miles became my goal, not my husband's goal, not my child's goal. It became right. my goal. And I think that that's probably something that a lot of new mothers may be missing is identifying, okay, I, I'm, I am going to be a good mom. You know, I, I, I'm here for my child. I'm here for my husband or for my partner or whatever, mm -hmm. but do you have a goal for yourself? right? Because when you do whatever that goal is, it doesn't have to be running a hundred mile race is allowing yourself to know that, Hey, this is bringing inspiration. And this is bringing motivation for me every day. And I will tell you, um, running a hundred mile race was hard, mm -hmm. right? You think of a hundred mile race and you're thinking mine is already thinking like, how am I going to do that with Thank a newborn yeah, that train? right? Because what I decided was when, right when she was born and I had to wait the three months to get cleared. Mm -hmm. out. And then at that point, I realized like, no, I'm going to do this. I decided. So it starts with making a decision. I made the decision that I was going to do this goal for me mm -hmm. and that I was going to do whatever it took to get there. Right. So you start with your decision. I made the decision. Then I focused on not, I'm going to run a hundred mile race. I was like, what is the first thing I need to focus on is, okay, I need to create a plan. I need to have one mile a day, even if that would, is what it looked like. Mm. And that, that's where I was like, okay, that's fine. And the training was wonderful, but the training was also hard because I was breastfeeding and yeah. I was working two full-time jobs, right? And it was, it was crazy, but even through the midst of that, it gave me inspiration every day to show up as a mother, to show up as a wife, to show up as a partner, right? Even I wasn't sleeping anyway. So I figured if I'm not sleeping, how can I manage my activities in a way that I'm still doing this race and, and doing it in a way that intuitively felt good for my body, right? That I was still showing up for my partner, right? We all know that there's needs, you know, it's not just showing up. There's a lot of other needs that have to happen. Sexual needs, like let's be for real. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then we have our child right. that they, you know, feeding our child and then the other side of the spectrum, which is the career side. Right. Anyhow, without getting too into that, uh, ultimately it was very, it was hard. There were moments where I was like, okay, why am I doing this? And perhaps a lot of you are asking your, yourself that question too. Like, why did you do that to yourself? Or why am I doing this? And the reality is, is because it brought me inspiration and motivation to move forward. And even in the midst of times where I was like, man, is this going to happen? You know, I remember my husband telling me like, why are you doing this? And I'm like, you know, for me, this is, this is healing for me, right? And this is a journey where I need to understand my body. I'm, I'm an ultra marathoner. Like this is what I do. It's my beingness, right? And nobody takes this away from me, right? The same way that nobody takes away your wholeness and your beingness from you. And so even when he told me that I was like, no, like I'm going to do this. And sure enough, my daughter was uh, 10 and a half months, 11 months. I ran my hundred miles 
And I will tell you from someone that has done a lot, a lot of mileage in her body, a lot of races, <laughs> that that was probably the most interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say interesting because I went through every phase of healing in that process, right? And if you're a runner, you might understand this. If you're not a runner, you might understand this in another capacity of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that be art, whether that be you doing something, it doesn't ha- even have to be physical. Right. right. But I went through a lot of, it was like a, an spiritual, uh, it was a spiritual mm-hmm. journey for me through this process. And that's when I realized, okay. Like, I really need to go there, right? It forced me to go inward, not because, okay, at first is I I identified a goal that I knew was mine, Mm. that drew inspiration and motivation. I made the decision. After I made that decision, I committed to what it took to get there. I was persistent. It didn't Mm. matter what was going to get in the way. I was not a worse mother. I was not a worse wife. I was not, there was no judgment. I was like, I'm still going to be what I'm going to be right? But this is what I'm going to do. I did it. And I finished. And the percentage of people that do their 100 mile race for the first time is, you know, not a lot of people get there, but it's because of the mindset, right? I wasn't focused on, I'm not going to do this. I committed. I knew I was going to do it one way or another, obviously taking in all the safety precautions and I finished. But once I finished, I realized, wow, the reason that I was guided to do that, right, intuitively, was because I needed to go inward. I needed to go inward and work on myself, right? And once I realized that, and I think that's where when we get the big clear picture, you're like, why am I really doing that? Like, Mm -hmm. does that make sense? Even Mm -hmm. though I have an inner knowing, deep inner knowing that that's what I'm supposed to do. It all made sense, right? Which all, it, which it all ties down to that intuitive process mm-hmm. and being an intuitive being, right? Mm. And so, I don't know if you have anything to share or say. Yeah, that I talk yeah. about this because it like gives me goosebumps going through the process, right? It's a beautiful story, and I thank you for sharing and taking up all of that space. And you could have taken up more if you want, but um, no, I'm just gonna just um, come in a little bit and just say like everything Jennifer said there's there's so many nuggets in what she just said and we could probably do like 10 spin-offs of what you said but the biggest thing which she's about to go into is she knew intuitively that she had she needed to, to 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 look within but like how do you know that because I know that I, I have people in my life and, and majority of people are like this. And I, I didn't realize this until, um, and also sidebar, how do we know each other? Me and Jennifer know each other because we have a coach, Hina Khan, that we are getting coached by. So we are both coaches and we get coached. It's, it's important that you, if you have a coach, they're getting coached. So We are in that same community and we've connected um, beautifully. And so that's how we know each other. But um, I've learned being with Hina in that in this in a space that a lot of people are on autopilot. Mm. A lot of people just let the days pass them by. Mm -hmm. They allow, which they don't probably realize this, but they allow life to happen to them. So when we're talking about like intuition and looking within a lot of people, it, it's just, it's just going over. Like I'm just being, you know, a hundred percent. And so I really want to get to those people because intuition, once you tap into it, it's powerful, right? It, it's powerful. It, it allows you to run a hundred miles. Yeah. Like, there's no there's no other way to explain it like because it's it sounds crazy that Jennifer was like I'm gonna run this this hunt this 100 mile race but intuitively she got a nudge that's what 
we call it, you know, they call it, you get a nudge or a gut, your gut instinct. That's a common phrase, your gut instinct. You just, you just feel like you, you go through your days and, and it keeps coming to you. I should run a race. I should run a race. And for, for other people, whoever's listening to this, it could be, I need to reach out to this person. Maybe you haven't talked to the person in 20 years, whatever it is, but you just, for the past week, day in and day out, you're like washing dishes, you're taking a shower. It's like when you're not thinking of anything, you get the nudge, you get the feeling and you're like, oh, and then you might ignore it because the majority of people just ignore their thoughts. They just allow life to happen to them. And then you realize, oh, you get a sign like that's, you know, sometimes you just get a sign. But anyways, I just wanted to kind of go into that because a lot of people just allow life to pass them by. They're not aware. They are not aware of anything that is happening to them. They are taking their kids to school. They're coming home to work or going to work. Then they pick the kids up. And then, you know, the di- it's just like a uh, groundhog day. So it's like, how do we, and this is something I wasn't even really, um, didn't really share like with Jennifer, but like, I really want to ask this question, like, how do we wake those people up? Like, how do we tell, like, what, what do you suggest before you, um, and if you want to go into the, the five steps to, to get into that, but that's a question I really, I didn't even know I was going to have this question, but it's like, cause I have people on my mind that I'm just like, if they if only, but yeah. So I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. And I think that's such a beautiful question. And, you know, even the direction that we're, I mean, I feel even like this is an intuitive conversation. Right. We're just kind of getting these downloads that perhaps are channeled or whatever. And and we get to have open, real conversation. Right. Yeah. For one, I would say that perhaps there's a stigma around the word intuition. Yes. And the reason that the stigma is there is because it seems illogical. Right. Sometimes it's an illogical thing that you think or that you feel or it's strange. It's weird. And we as a collective society, we're not used to recognizing or validating these intuitive ideas. Right. Like you mentioned, people are very dismissive, like that's weird. And then they just move on or that's interesting. And, you know, they don't even think anything of it or unconsciously. It's just kind of happening. Right. And I think with intuition is really identifying those patterns. Right. Is becoming aware of those patterns. And, and realizing that intuition may come in pieces. And I think that's the, 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 really the misconception is people think, oh, I'm an intuitive being or, or intuition, and you're just going to get this clear message and you're going to know, and it's going to change your whole life. But the reality, like everything, right? Like a race, like this, like that, like it's an, a muscle that you must exercise, that you must bring attention to. And you might just get a little message that you're like, that's interesting. Like, I don't know why that person came up in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then suddenly you got another nudge to like, you know what, I'm going to call that person. You call that person. And then suddenly when you call that person, that person says, wow, I needed to hear your voice. That was exactly the message that I needed to hear today because I have been going through X, Y, and Z, like, thank you. Right. And then you're like, oh, that's so interesting that I can kind of put the pieces together now. Right. And that's just an example. You know, another example might be like uh, you're driving unconsciously on autopilot, you're driving and you took a different route home without even knowing you took a different route home. You're like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go this way. And then you find out that day that there was a traffic jam, there was an accident, there was something that happened and you're like, huh. That's interesting. That's really, that's, that's really kind of intuition kind of tapping in without you even knowing. So we don't even know. Yeah. We don't even know that we're doing it already. Right. We don't even, we don't even know to the extent of how intuition is playing in our life on a daily basis. Right. Right. And so what I was inclined to do was just kind of draw up like five steps to kind of step into your power of intuition. I love it. Sorry. I just, I'm so excited because like Jennifer said, I'm I'm sorry to cut you, but this is all intuitively led. You know, I um, also like, why, why is Jennifer here? You know, the name of my Facebook group is quick energy boost for working moms and um, not to go down that rabbit hole, but you know, I'm, I'm changing. Things are changing. I'm still here to support you. 
I am still here to support you. That is always going to be the end all and be all. I just want to expand how I support you. And I know I have people in my life that are interested about spirituality and those kind of things. And I want you to know also this, it's not like you don't got to buy crystals and the tarot, like, and Jennifer's going to, she's going to give you a list and, and you're not gonna have to buy anything. That's the crazy thing. You're not gonna have to buy one thing. <laughs> yes. And you so, know, yeah. and tapping into what you're saying, Leslie, is we're always searching. Yeah. We're searching for answers. We're searching for this and for that. And really, if we just took to the time to search within, we realize that the wholeness lives within us. Yes. The light lives within us, right? And that is when we're able to pay more and more attention. And so going back to intuition, so here are the five steps that, that I came up with. Um, and I think that there's common ground with other people that really like to tap into their intuition just to kind of get into your power is step one, you have to, well, I wouldn't say you have to, I feel like have to is, you know, an invitation, right? First, acknowledge and accept that you are an intuitive being, okay? And, and do that without judgment, without putting any meaning behind it. Just say, you know, we were all brought into this world with our creative, unique gifts, right? We are God's highest form of creation. And when we understand the magnitude of even that, we can acknowledge and accept that we are intuitive beings. We are, right? And um, step two is pay attention. So what I mean by paying attention is you probably have all heard the same um, energy flows where your attention goes, right? Wherever you're putting energy towards, that's where your attention is going. So if you are on autopilot, for example, you're probably not even thinking about the intuition, right? So if you start to kind of think about like, oh, okay, right? Like, I'm just going to bring some awareness. I'm going to just focus on if something comes up, I'll be more interested and be like, oh, that's interesting, but not be dismissive, right? Um, you know, you'll start to see that you'll slowly be guided, right? And, you know, start noticing perhaps if there's a sign that you continuously keep seeing, you know, throughout the week, start noticing coincidences, right? I don't think that anything is by coincidence, but notice, like, are you seeing the same person over and over? Is that name coming up on your phone all the time, right? Start noticing the synchronicities that are happening, right? Perhaps there's a sequence of numbers that you're seeing, you're like, huh, that's interesting, right? Um, what we talked about, if all of a sudden you took, you were inspired, right? Because it comes through inspiration too, is you were inspired to take a different route home. And you're like, I don't even know why I went this direction, right? Or suddenly you're like, oh, I really feel like eating this. Like you, all these things that come up, right? That's how you start paying attention. Now, I will say this and caution you with this is don't go searching for these things now. Allow them and receive them. Just pay attention, right? Because when we go searching for something, we're going to find it. It's like that confirmation bias. It's like, oh, okay, great. Now I'm seeing this. Oh, whatever. And, but just doing it in a way where it just feels natural. Again, intuitive. It's like, oh, okay. Like, wow, that came to me. Like, I wasn't even looking for it. But like, you're paying attention now that it's coming to you, right? It's almost like uh, there was something that I had heard. Harmony exists in everything you, know, like when you notice it, right? Um, if you notice it. So the step three is identify if you are a visual, an auditory, or a kinesthetic receiver, okay? I think that's very big because our senses play a very big part in intuition, right? Uh, when you start noticing, like, you know, are you seeing different things? Perhaps, like, you have a vision of something. Um, are you are you hearing different things, or uh, are you feeling something? Perhaps you you go and see someone, and you have this feeling, right? Um, and I mean, we can spend a lot of time there, but just noticing, like, what is your primary like sense? Like, how how are you receiving this information, right? I have a question about that, this one. Sure. Um, how, how do you discover that? 
it goes back to paying attention, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, notice in your language, when you talk to somebody, right? Let's say something came to your mind or anything. You're like, oh my goodness, I have this feeling that this and that is going to happen and whatever. I don't know why, but I'm really like getting like this thing. And, or you're saying, you know what? Like, I really think um, X, Y, and Z, or I'm having this sense of like, I'm listening to this thing and I heard this thing and I heard this thing. Uh, so you start picking up on your language as far as are you hearing something, right? Or, you know, I really felt this when I saw this, right? Or does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes 100% sense. And you said that earlier. Once you started saying that, I was like, oh yeah, you mentioned that. And language, like that also goes into like being, think before you speak. Like we probably tell our kids that all the time because, you know, kids are very honest. But it's like, think before you speak. So it's like, what are you saying internally? That's a whole nother. What are you saying internally? And then what's coming out of your mouth? You know what I mean? And um, yeah, but just like, also with that though, think before you speak. Like, I don't want people to think you have to have a filter, but that's another conversation too. But exactly. just knowing like in your head, if you're like, if you don't want to say it out loud, that's okay. You can journal it. You can think it. I highly recommend journaling it, writing it down. I feel like X, Y, and Z. I think I sense, like write that out if you're not comfortable saying it out loud yet. But it's very important to know what type of learner you are. That's a really exactly. good tip. Yes, right? Because even uh, you might notice that you get goosebumps when there's certain conversations, when it feels in alignment and you're like, oh my goodness, like that really, like it touched my soul, right? So you're noticing like, okay, like what, what is it? How are you responding to the information that you're receiving, you know? Um, and it's like you hear, you see, you know, it's having that inner feeling. And I think that's the thing with intuition, right? Is that intuition is this all loving and all knowing presence, right? That is not really going through the conscious mind. You're not thinking about it. It's not analytically like functioning from the left brain. You know, it's, it, it just is, right? And going into the fourth step is invite in silence, okay? And I know some of you might be thinking, silence? I have children. I have this life. I, I'm busy. I'm whatever. Like, what does that even mean? Now, I also want to highlight that silence does not mean to quiet your mind. It literally means exactly what I'm saying. The simplicity of go to the bathroom put earplugs on or don't and just literally like just be there in that silence where you're not speaking you're literally just filtering through and sorting okay I have clutter in my mind okay no judgment I'm thinking this no judgment right and then as you start to allow yourself that opportunity to just invite silence it's like everything is an invitation and everything is bringing attention because if you notice, if you bring attention to silence, you're bringing energy to that silence, right? That, that's good. That's really good, Jennifer. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to keep, but like, you're bringing energy to that silence. Yeah. That's very good. And it's actually fueling you. Because when I think of energy, I think of fueling me, filling my cup, whatever you want to call it, gassing you up, making you excited. This conversation right now is making me very like, ah, like I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and so that's a good point because I know, I know people that are like scared to sit in silence. Like they're scared because they don't, they just, they're scared, you know? So I like that you, you reframed that in, in the sense that you're when you're silence, you're, you're bringing energy into that silence. You're allowing that the, si the space to fill. Like you don't have to fill the space all of the time. Yeah. 
And I think you nailed it in, in the reframing and you even reframed it beautifully is, you know, some of these words may have a negative connotation. Silence for you might be like, that's triggering. Yes. Find another word. Right. right? That is inviting and is all loving and annoying for you. It's like, hey, I'm going to sit in the bathroom and that's your silence. Or I'm going to, my meditation space is in my little tiny closet. I have a little cushion there. That's my space where I'm like, okay, whatever, whatever comes to me. And I think is inviting in that silence because when you start, like I said, you start sorting through what are you thinking, what is going on and everything. And from a non-judgmental and a compassionate manner, you start realizing, oh, I'm connecting to my heart now. I'm allowing myself that silence. I'm bringing energy to that silence. I'm listening. And that's when you get to notice when you identify if you're a visual, an auditory or kinesthetic receiver, are you listening to something auditory? Are you feeling something, right? Are you seeing something? So in that silence, that starts to get more uh, pronounced, right? And it's a practice. And the last step that I would say is for one to be patient and to trust, to trust your inner knowing who is all loving and all knowing, right? And trust, because here's the thing is, I know I can speak from my experiences. Sometimes we want things last year or we want things yesterday, right? We want things to happen in a certain way. And perhaps that's just a, a conditioning, right? Limiting beliefs and so on and so forth. That, that's a conversation for another day as well, right? And sometimes, right, these limiting beliefs that are in our subconscious mind may deter us from inviting in that silence or even becoming aware of all these things that we have access to, we all have access to this, right? But when we allow ourselves to trust that this is a process, it's a journey, it's an experience that is gonna be different every single time. And I think that that's the beauty of it is you don't know what it's gonna look like, but you know that it's right. Right. And that's, I wanted to leave it with that because the biggest thing ultimately is, as I mentioned earlier, is perhaps you may hear one word, right? And it might come to you in a certain way. You might notice certain patterns, or perhaps you may have a vision of something or even in your dreams or, or so on and so forth, right? Like that's, you know, um, kind of not the topic, but um, you may get an idea or a download or a nudge and things start showing up that way, right? Is allowing yourself to start putting the pieces together, right? Not feeling that you have to take action from that one thing that you heard, right? Because I also do feel that things happen in divine timing. And sometimes we want it in our timing, right? But is trusting that process and that journey that, hey, something came. It, it might be a very clear message. Like, I'm not saying that. Like, it's everybody's process and intuitive process is very different because we are all unique beings. And I think that that's really the picture that I want you to take from this conversation is we're all unique. We all have the abilities to tap in, but attention goes or energy flows where attention goes. So it's that invitation to you, like what's possible for you if you invited in that attention to see these things that are constantly surrounding you, right? These intuitive powers that you have and you hold within you, right? What's possible for you? It's always, there's always that possibility, right? So beautiful, so beautiful. And if you're here live, I see there's somebody here. We're just talking, we're wrapping up, talking about intuition. What is that? It's not exclusive. It's for everybody. We all have it. Jennifer just gave us five amazing tips that you don't have, and you don't got to buy anything. I'm just reiterating that because, you know, I know it can feel like being on social media, like everybody's like selling you things and all of that. And this is just 
this is, was amazing. This conversation, it was amazing. Yeah. And, um, I just I want to, yeah. One thing, uh, Leslie, when I talked about paying attention, carry a little notebook. What I do is I use my phone. Yes. I use the notes. And when I see something that I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Like I write it down. Right. And I just start writing it down. Or if I have like an idea that came to me, I'm like, why? That's interesting mm -hmm. that I have that, right? You know, especially as like entrepreneurs, you're like, wow, yeah. that's a really good idea, right? But so I, I ideas. keep the ideas there. Yeah. Um, and really intuition really helps with decision-making as well. It does. It really helps with intuition and, you know, just an invitation for all of you to tap in, to know like what this journey looks like for you. And it's exciting. It's um, so exciting. Yeah. So where can they tell everybody where on social media that we can find you? Because maybe there's people in this community that want to work with you. And that's that's the beauty of as I bring other people, either I bring them here in the Facebook group in my yoga studio. Like I want you all to know that if you choose, if you vibe more with Jennifer, that's amazing. Like so um, Jennifer, please share where they can find you. Yeah, so my handle on Instagram is discovering underscore impossible. I'm possible, right? Impossible and I am possible. Uh, you are all possible. And uh, also on Facebook, Jennifer Johnson. So I can throw over the links. That way you guys can reach me and know that, you know, this kind of work is really kind of tapping into your zenful heart, into your wholeness, right? And, you know, that's a lot of the work that I do is allowing and guiding people to connect more with themselves, along with the coaching, right, as to figuring out how they can make room for all this richness, this goodness that we have inside us, these beautiful gifts. So, Leslie, it's been such a pleasure. This is amazing. Yeah, um, this was really good. <laughs> be here and have an amazing conversation. Yeah. You know, you guys Thanks. are amazing. You're, you're so amazing. Thank you, Jennifer. Wishing everybody a great weekend. If you're watching this as a recording, let us know in the chat if you have any questions about intuition. You can also send me a, a direct message if you, you know, you don't want to leave it in the, in the comments. That's okay. But um, other than that, we're going to go. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.